Fingers on his hands, hands shape the wood and the bone. Fashion from the stars like no other can. Bailey builds guitars with the wind and the sun. Welcome folks, welcome back to the workshop. Welcome to the Bailey workshop. I've been working on the backdrop a bit um, for a guitar making channel. So today we're going to talk about the ultimate question. What is the ultimate question? I can see you're all asking. What is the ultimate question? Well, to me, I get this question a lot. I had it a couple of weeks ago and uh, I had it again yesterday, um, is, well actually I'm going to split it into two questions. The first question is, can I do it? And the second question is, can I make a living doing it? So I think the answer to both questions is yes, if you just want to just skip forward and, and uh, that's the quick version, yes and yes. <laughs> but it's complicated. So I'm going to talk a bit about, um, um, a lot of people have doubts whether they, they think um, they might not be able to build a guitar um, because they think guitars are made by genius luthiers somewhere. Um, and um, the bigger question is, um, can I make a living doing it? So that is one where um, I've got my team of lawyers over there waiting just in case I say the wrong thing. Um, what I don't want you to do is just to, everybody just give up their jobs tomorrow and become guitar makers. That's not going to work. Um, guitar making, um, I say that anybody can do it. And I totally believe that is true. I know because I've taught over 400 people face to face how to do it here in my humble workshop in the hills of Ayrshire. People travel from all over the world to come and um, come on my workshop courses or at least they did until the um, recent events kicked in. Um, but um, thankfully I'd been working on um, my online courses. So we run courses where people come and design their own guitars and build them step by step here. But what I did was I filmed it and this was about four years ago we started. So it's not just cobbled together for the lockdown. Um, we've been working on it for years. Um, what I did was I filmed every stage of the operation from building from start to finish on acoustics and electrics and we made um, online courses which are available. You need to be a premium member to get on them but um, that's what we've been doing for the last four years. Um, so I've forgotten what I was saying already. My team of lawyers is over there to keep me straight. So can I make a living making guitars? Um, the short answer is yes, but the longer answer is a bit more complicated. The problem is I haven't had a swig of tea yet, that's what it is. I had to go and make my own tea this morning, folks. So we're going to be talking about that this morning. I think that's the ultimate question. Can I make a guitar? And I think the answer is yes. Can I make a living doing it? Well, the answer to that is a lot more difficult. It's still yes, but um, with caveats. So we're going to go into that today. I've got two cups of tea here. Carol. Oh. I made one for you at home. That's nice, thank you. 
Cheers, folks. So I hope you're all enjoying your tea. Let's get into it. Um, hello to everyone watching, by the way. Carol's normally shouted out all stuff by now. I'm trying not to interrupt. Go on, I've done my intro. Who's, who's watching? Right, well, you've got all sorts. You've got Matt in Denver. You've got James Bissett in Carmanel. You've got Deej in Surrounded by Lockdown in Sunny Lancashire. You've got Grey Heart in Virginia. We've got EP, I can't remember where EP is. We've got Roland Ashdown in the house. We have also, we've got uh, Clint, he says it's raining in Hawaii. I'm not laughing, right? We've got- uh, It's TV. like Italy out there. We've got um, Bill Flood. We've got Tony Potter in Australia. So we've got all the time zones covered. You are very welcome. It is glorious like Italy here Amazing, today. we're global. That's what, as long as we're covering the globe, I'm happy. <laughs> So that's brilliant. So yes, I get a lot of people asking me, um, you know, I'm just an idiot. Can I make a guitar? Well, um, you know, you're looking at a prime example of a complete idiot and I managed to do it. So I think you can do it, but you are going to need some tools. Um, I've got, I've made a list of essential tools. Um, you can actually go to the forum on guitarmaking.co.uk. If you sign up as a free member, then you get to download the essential tools. Um, you can become a supporter. Like I say, if you want the full courses, you become a premium member. But I made a list of essential tools that I think you'll need to get started. Um, it's kind of like a little book called Essential Tools for Guitar Making and at the back is like a checklist which gives you um, a little tick box that you can fill in as you get your tools. So there's quite a few tools that you'll need. Obviously the biggest ones are the bandsaw and the router but then most of them are just hand tools. Um, for instance we do our neck carving with just rasps. Um, this just in folks, this is our new uh, half inch round rasp which is in. So um, check that out, that's in, on the essential list um, of tools. You need something to carve your neck with. Uh, there's some examples now on the site, a few different examples. A little half inch round one's really handy for getting into the corners. Um, most of the tools you need are hand tools, but you do need a few big power tools. Um, my main advice on tools would be buy the best ones that you can afford. And um, if you haven't got money, then what I advise is to beg, borrow, but don't steal, please. <laughs> so um, you'd be surprised if you put the word out there that you, um, you want to be a guitar maker and you, you're mad keen on guitars. If people see that you're actually doing it, um, you'd be amazed what they will give you. They'll give you all sorts of tools and amazing stuff, um, stuff that they've had in their shed for years and they're not using or they've used once and they don't need it again. You'd be amazed, every guy's got loads of stuff in his shed that he'd be happy for you to see you used by somebody who's going to, um, you know, make good use of it. So the fact that you can't afford the tools, don't let that stop you. Um, and sheds and that types of things. So there are ways and means if you really want to do it. Um, what I want to get across basically in this live stream is that if you really want to do it, you can do it. And... Um, don't let anything stop you. You can even make your own tools if it comes to it, you know. I used to do quite a lot of that back in the day. Nowadays I tend to buy them, um, but you, you can make all your own tools. We've got a whole section on the course on making your own patterns and jigs. So don't let the fact that you haven't got the tools stop you. So we've got a question already, Carol. Well, what, what kind of, what questions are you, you taking? What's your plan to say? What questions are you taking? Yeah, if you've got any questions, um, about. yeah, I'd like to mainly focus on um, questions about um, doubts you've got about whether you can do it or not. And um, yeah, if, you're, if you want to try and um, make a living at this, then those are the sorts of questions we're after today. But really, I'll answer any questions. Um, this whole channel, the whole reason I'm here is, well, I can't run workshop courses anymore because of the, the lockdown and all that. So um, the whole reason I'm here is just to show you guys how to build guitars. Um, that's what I do. So um, I'm here on YouTube doing it. We've had, we've had a new, a new so any questions, just leave them in the comments and Carol will shout them out. Okay, and 
So we've had a new a new uh, watcher, Juiced Doman, who's is watching in from the Netherlands. Uh, I think he's the first time in the Howdy doody, time. Netherlands. Um, so it's worth explaining that if, about, you know, how people ask questions. But... Yeah, so if you just leave a comment in the chat, then, um, then Carol will shout it out. Um, you can, if you want to leave a tip, you can do a super chat and uh, give us a tip, enough for a coffee or a pint if you want, but you don't have to. Um, I don't know, you click the thing that says super chat. How do they super chat? You click the thing that says super chat underneath the chat and you can, and what it does is it highlights your question and then we, we definitely won't miss it. But um, there are a lot of channels where you have to leave a super chat um, to get your question answered. It's not like that here. I'll answer any question. So you don't have to do that, but feel free. We haven't had one yet, so you could be our first. <laughs> We've got our first question, which is a good early question. Let's have a question, come on. Right, so this is from Roland Ashdown. Can you suggest... Hey, Roland. Can you suggest... So this is the guitar that I'm making for Roland. Roland's one of our customers. Beautiful, eh? Beautiful. 400-year-old. If you want to see, I sanded this on the last live stream. We do live streams every Wednesday and Saturday. And at the moment, on Saturdays, we are... Um, we're doing guitar making techniques, so I'm taking you through all the basic techniques and we did sanding on Saturday and the Saturday before we did carving and I used um, Roland's guitar as an example. This is 400 year old um, walnut from Glastonbury. Something a bit special, I think you'll agree. So his question is, a brilliant one, he said can you suggest a workbench supplier for someone like me who doesn't want to make a living but would be fine for the stuff, stuff a guitar builder would do. So a home workbench. Write this down, Carol. Workbench. Yeah. No, is the answer to that. I cannot recommend you buy a workbench because they're so expensive. What I do recommend, though, is that you make your own. And um, it's really simple. Um, if you look at my bench here, all I've done is I've screwed a 4x2 batten to the wall and then I've built... Um, I've built these kind of frames, really simple to make. These are our legs. Um, let's see how high. I make my benches about 90 centimetres high. A little bit higher than that, to be honest, by the time they've got the top on and that. So these are our legs, it's just a frame. And we screw this to the battens that are attached to the wall. And then you can just, you can put extra buttons across to make shelving and you put your, your lid on, job done. Super cheap and super strong. Because it's bolted to the wall, it's solid. Um, the bench that I work on here, if we just put the overhead on this, this is a freestanding bench. I've basically built it the same method, but, um, but it's a lot more solid. And, and it's freestanding, it's not bolted to the wall. So, um, that's why if I'm really rough with it, it does wobble a bit. As you can see, like super heavy wood, isn't it? my cup of tea wobbling there. My cup of tea, look. So, but it does the, it does the job. Um, I really should go round and tighten all the screws up and, um, but, but this bench, I actually bought this bench up from Coventry when we moved to Scotland from Coventry. I dismantled it. Um, unbolted it, bolted it all together up here. So it's just bolted together, this one. I really should have glued and screwed it and it would have been much more solid. But we didn't know how long we were going to be here, did we, Carol? No, and I, I was just thinking of the... When you make these Yeah, benches. so it was kind of... Everything in here is dismantleable. Um, but I guess I'll, I'll, I'll take it apart one day and glue it so it'll be a lot more um, sturdy. Um, but yeah, that is a fantastic idea. Who was that? Well, that was Roland asking. What Roland, do, cheers, Roland. Brilliant yeah. question. But in the chat, everybody sent, everybody's saying. I'm going to do a video on that then. Build one. I will build a bench for you um, at some point in the coming weeks. We'll put it on the list of stuff to do. Other stuff that's coming up, by the way, is um, we've still got. I'm going to do clamping and gluing this Saturday, I think. Everybody always asks me what kind of glue we use as a guitar maker, so we're going to be um, talking about that on Saturday and I'll show you lots of different gluing and clamping techniques. Believe it or not, holding your workpiece is half the battle. How many halves have we got now, Carol? <laughs> I think that's about the fourth half now. But anyway, onward.
So yes, don't let tools hold you back because people will give you tools. Tools that aren't expensive, especially in this day and age. It's amazing what you can get for your money. Um, maybe boots. 20 years ago, um, it probably would have been a bit more of an elite um, pastime. But nowadays, anybody can afford a bandsaw and a router. And they're not expensive. You can get a cheap one, but get the best one you can afford. Um, if you want to know a bit more about that, I did a whole um, episode on routing and bandsawing in the technique section. You can go back and watch those. And also, I did a video to accompany the Essential Tools book, which is half an hour long, and I talk about the best bandsaw and the best router to buy and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you're going to need to invest in some tools. But also, I would say invest in yourself. Invest in some training, if you can. Um, I was very lucky and I got a job in a guitar factory. So um, I learned, that's where I learned my trade. But before that, I did a course on woodwork. Um, there's a multitude of courses in every town on woodwork that you could do. Just to learn your, your basic techniques, um, sharpening skills and that kind of thing. Um, you can maybe get a course on routing. Um, I'm pretty sure any, every town will have a woodworking course available. Um, of course, I would generally urge you to go in the direction of the guitar making channel and then you can, um, you can sign up there as a premium member and learn everything that you need to know. Um, make friends with someone who's got a workshop, like I say. Um, that's not always easy because most guitar makers, they really don't like sharing their knowledge um, and they certainly don't like they won't let you use that workshop. But, we've, but had, we've had students that have taken on small units or found places together, haven't we? And share yeah, share a unit. That's another thing someone. you can do. Club together with some friends and share a unit. Start your own men's shed. So, um, yeah, invest in some training or get a book. Get some books. Um, best advice I could give you is learn from as many places and as many people as possible. So don't just take my word for it. Um, if I was 18 again, I'd sign up on my course, but I'd also be buying books um, and I'd be doing everything I can. I mean, now, nowadays you've got YouTube. We've got our own channel on YouTube, which you've discovered, hopefully, and uh, building up a huge playlist there of stuff, every book written on guitar making. So... Um, I like to learn from as many different people as possible. When I worked at the factory that shall not be named, um, there was Trevor Wilkinson, um, Gary Levinson, Patrick Eggle, Rob Williams, and some of the names that you probably won't have heard of, Peter Davis, um, Peter Allen, some of the best guitar makers and repair technicians in the country. And one of them would teach me something and then somebody else would teach me the same job, but completely different. <laughs> so I love that because um, a lot of people, they found that annoying because they're like, oh, just show me how to do it. But I love that because you learn two or three different ways to do the same job. And they all have their own context where they work particularly well. So I'll show you my way to do everything. In fact, when I'm running my courses, especially on the online stuff, I'll usually show you um, like a way to do it by hand and then a way to do it using a router or a machine. Um, if there's several ways to do it that I know about, I'll usually show you those. Um, and if I haven't yet, then I certainly will at some point. So I've still got rakes and rakes of stuff to show you. We're working our way through it. I've got a post actually on the forum. If you go to the forum, um, what would you like to see next? You'll see the whole list of stuff, some of which I've done, some of which is yet to come. Um, and if you've got any ideas, by the way, of what you'd like to see me do, then please leave a comment um, in the chat or you can leave a comment afterwards if the chat's finished. Um, or head over to the forum and let me know there. Or email me, whatever. Um, can I just tell you, Mark, we're having a few uh, glitch... Can you apologise? We're having a few glitches today, a few connectivity problems. Um, our internet seems to be... You didn't actually print my email out, did you? Um... No. Doesn't matter. I'll wing it. 
So the reason I'm doing this today is because I had an email from, it was Ross, I believe his name was Ross. Um, and he was asking me um, these questions. So um, yeah, we're still on the can I do it section. We're going to move on to can I make a living soon. But um, I would say that um, the, the other thing you will need to build a guitar is it's not for everybody. You need a certain amount of determination. So it's not easy. Of course, it's easy when it's easy, but it's when things go wrong, things start to get tough. And I can tell you from experience that um, if you've spent four or five days working on something and then you do something really stupid and you make a stupid mistake, it can break your heart. Or you don't even have to make a mistake, you can just drop it. Or, um, or anything can go wrong. Um, when that happens, it can be um, heartbreaking. And so one, th one of the other things I think that you do need is resilience. You need a bit of a tough skin. You need to be able to bounce back. Um, and sometimes, I'll tell you now, there's been many times where I thought, right, that's it, I'm giving up. I'm never doing this again, because it can be so painful. But um, the, thing you, the thing to do when you feel like that is just put it down, go and do something else for a bit. And then when you come back, it never looks as bad as it did. And there is always a fix. And um, if you guys ever find yourself in that position, then come to the forum and we'll sort you out. We'll tell you, we'll set you straight. Um, I mean, in the worst case, just start again. Um, at least nobody was hurt. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Touching wood. So yes, guitar making is not for everything. It can be tough and you need to be able to, um, to get through those tough times. So if you want um, instant success, guitar making is probably not for you. But the rewards are there. I mean, it's amazing when you get to play something that you've made yourself. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. I feel the urge to show you my first guitar. So I did make hundreds of electric guitars before this, but I was quite nervous about making acoustic guitars because obviously they're a different kettle of fish. But in the end, I discovered they're just different jobs. They're, n they're not, none of them are more harder or easier. They're just different. Um, and so, like I say, I believe anybody can do it. And um, if you've got all your bits, then you'll have no problem at all. As long as you don't mind a bit of graft and um, when things go wrong, a bit of resilience. So this is actually um, my first guitar. Actually, I made two at the same time. So it's the first and second. Um, but yeah, I will never part with this. And the pride and joy you get from finishing your first guitar, I can't tell you. It's amazing. One day I'll wipe the dust off at you. This is now the workshop guitar. And, uh, and I use it when I'm gigging. This is my guitar, which I use everywhere. And I love and I will never part with. So um, one thing about this, which is one of the reasons why I got into it in the first place, is that um, you get to leave something behind. So we get a lot of, um, we get some old fellas who want to leave something behind to their sons and daughters. Um, and we get young folks alike. Um, but it's one of the things that I love about guitar making is that, well, I'm, I'm, you get to leave something beautiful behind when we're gone, hopefully to be remembered by. Um, so it's one of the reasons I do it. Um, I wanted to make something beautiful. So um, I'm going to show you now some pictures of some guys that have come on our course and done it, All right? We're going to do examples here to show. I'm going to show you some pictures of people that have done it on the course and then we're going to go on and talk about um, making a living at guitar making.
I What's the matter, Carol? Well, I, I I've had my hand up to ask you a question. Go and ask me a question then. Ask, we'll do questions okay. first. Okay, so, um, so Roland's asked, there's been another couple of questions. Roland's asked about vices for the bench. Um, can you recommend or is there any vices that you suggest? Um, yes, vices and... What, what do you suggest? Is there another question? There's a comment. Go on, do the comment then. Clint in Hawaii says he just routed a trussword cavity to find out that it was way off centre. He had to walk away. He built walk a, away, Clint. He built a new, new neck and he rerouted it. Yeah. Um, sometimes you can just move the centre line. That's why we route the trussword slot first on the course. We route the trussword slot first. So if you get it off centre, you can just move the centre line. <laughs> if you've done anything else first, and then you route it off centre, then you, you're pretty much stuffed, aren't you? So yeah, that is one of the things about, um, about the course is it's all about um, what to do, what order to do it in, and you need to know when to stop. So that's what I say, I'm always saying this, you need to know what to do, what order to do it, and when to stop. And so that's what I'm here for. Um, and if you can't get a job in a guitar factory like me, or come on my courses, then the only other way to do it is through hard won experience. So there's a lot of that as well. So Roland was asking about vices. This is my favorite kind of vice because I can move it anywhere and it sticks up above the bench. So let's get um, a different shot of... Uh, so this is a bench vice that's mounted into the, this one's mounted into the, um, onto the bench. Notice it, it's flush with the top of the bench so it doesn't stick up. Um, these are good, but it's a lot of work fitting it into the bench and it can't be moved. So um, it has disadvantages. So these are handy for some things, but to be honest, for the most part, I would recommend that um, you get something like this. So this just clips onto the bench. If I show you, maybe I'll show you next to the other one. So this clips on here. Like that. And a little screw thread under there, look. Just clamps it onto the bench. Um, so Steve actually sent me some money to buy two new vices because as you can see this one's broke the handles broke off i'm still waiting for them to come back into stock so i usually get these from axminster but they're out of stock and um, we're waiting for them to come back in but this is a woodworker's vice and it's a bench i guess it's a bench mounted and that is what i'd recommend they have the added advantage of being reasonably cheap these, these are also called woodworker's vices, and but they tend to be more expensive. Um, and if I just zoom in over there on my metal working area, you'll see that's a metal working vice over there. It's a bit dark. But um, a metal working vice is a bit of a different shape. And they usually come with um, with an anvil that you can use for, for whacking. Slightly different. I'm over here. You're on the wrong camera. You're there now. Oh, I am on the wrong camera. So this is a metal worker's vice. So it's really only used for metal work. Don't get one of these. Um, but if that's all you've got, then by all means use it. Just use what you've got, isn't it? So, um, where's all my notes gone? So that, Mark, that was actually examples. They needed examples, not examples to show. They needed examples to show people. Oh yeah, right. Well, that's for making a living, isn't it? <clears throat> so um, I'm going to finish this section with um, a little story. 
So, uh, can I do it? Can I build a guitar? I've had people tell me literally to my face, that's impossible. You cannot make a guitar. To which I responded, watch me. So I was asked to build a guitar at a festival, the Kurt Michael International Guitar Festival, in a tent, in a field, um, which I did. But the guy, guy came up as I was starting and he said, so you're going to build a guitar, are you? He said, that's impossible. I said, watch me. And I proceeded to build a guitar in front of a crowd of folk. They all went wild. <laughs> It was it was fun. Um, the guitar was played at the highlight of the festival um, by Martin Taylor and Tommy Emmanuel. Uh, but that's a story for another video. But but, but um, yeah, people will tell you that you can't do it, and I'm here to tell you that they are wrong. But in the crowd watching you was a young boy of nine or ten and he was watching you through that build and he came yeah. last year uh big robert he came and built yep so carol's building. saying we had a, a nine-year-old in the crowd who was watching who years later you remembered it years later he came on the course and built his own so there you go don't let anyone put you off there'll be obstacles but we can overcome them and if you if you um really get stuck head over to the the website and we'll sort you out We'll set you straight. I've taught over 400 people to do it, so I know that you can do it. Um, so the last thing I will say is that it does help to have some support. So the naysayers, don't listen to those. Um, but um, if, if, if you can find someone who already knows about this kind of stuff and can give you a little bit of support, then that will help. Um, find a woodwork teacher if, you can, if you're a kid at school. Um, oh yeah, shout out to our um, friend in India who's building a double neck guitar for his first guitar at school. And um, he left a comment in the YouTube, I can't remember his name, but um, shout out to you in India. Um, big up to you guys, they wouldn't let me do it in my school. So I had to do it myself. So um, yes, you need some support, if possible. And that leads me on to the main topic today, which is, can I make a living as a guitar maker? Do you want to take some questions before you move on? Let's take some questions then, quick. Okay, so, um, uh, Rob, well, it's, it's a comment. Robert, Robin Gosman says that he has found uh, some 35mm thick pine and 12mm thick unidentified, hun, un, unidentified hardwood under his caravan. So he's going to have a practice shot at a Gosman Les Paul semi-hollow body carved top type thing specifically chosen for guitar tops but you could just use any old wood why not prove them all wrong okay, for all the rules you can always break the rules and still end up with a perfectly good guitar can you apologize we are having glitches today okay apologies for the glitches apparently we're having internet glitches okay and so it says can you bend it with a hair dryer that was the question um probably <laughs> Uh, sometimes when it gets really old, it can get brittle. I've got some stuff that I've had for years and it gets brittle. But yeah, you should be able to warm it up with a hairdryer. Of course, what I would say is test on a piece of scrap. Get a piece um, just on the end or something and just test it. And then you'll know for sure. Okay. Testing's key, isn't it? Always test. Check twice, cut once. Um, and uh, Rob, uh, Rock and Roller 912 asked if we'd ever had any difficult customers or people that we'd turned away, and I said they're all in the, they're all in the yeah, chat. Yeah, they're all difficult. They're all in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Every one of them. But we love them! Yeah. No, but... Um, well, maybe it's you that's difficult. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not me. It's the rest of the world. That's mad. No, um... It's all really about managing expectations. So bear this in mind when we go on to the next section, right? Managing expectations. If you've got customers, you have to um, try not to promise them what you can't uh, produce. So that is one of my main failures, if, if I have any <laughs> faults, 
is that I do tend to, I can over promise things. I'll promise because I really want to do it. I really want to help you. <laughs> and I really want to do the thing. And so I, sometimes I promise that I'll do something and I don't have time and I, I can't follow through. And uh, yeah, that's really upsetting. And um, I'm, I'm sure if it's upsetting for me, it's upsetting for the person I've promised it to as well. So you have to be really careful about that. Time. You, you don't have a yeah. concept of time. That's... Anyway, so I believe anybody can build guitars, um, but you have to have um, certain characteristics. Um, I'm going to show you just as proof some of the folks that have built guitars on our course. Um, I actually ran a, a course in, in a school a couple of times with, uh, how old were they, Carol? The um, nippers. They, were, they, were, they told me they were going to be strapping 14 year olds. And we got there and they were bloody they were midgets. <laughs> uh, anyway, all their teachers said they can't find anyone who's capable of building a guitar. Um, but I was employed by the council to run a, a guitar making course. And I said, look, anybody can do it. Um, so they were trying to find what they thought were talented students to build guitars. And I'm saying, look, you don't have to be a super talent. They actually said, we don't have anyone who can do that. And I said, look, let me be the judge of that. I'm the bloody teacher here. I know that anybody can do it. So um, yeah, they, they let me do it. And they, they picked um, the, the troublemakers. <laughs> they called them troublemakers anyway, they did. They accused them of breaking windows and all sorts of stuff uh, during while well, this course was on and they, they never did it. But anyway, this group of troublemaking kids had no problem whatsoever building guitars. They were like, right, what shall I do now? And I would give them a job. Done it. What shall I do next? So, yeah, basically, if you think um, most guitars are made in factories and they're not populated by genius luthiers, um, they're just normal people like me and you who turn up at nine and go home at five and do the job all day long. So in a factory, they've broken down the process into lots of individual jobs. That's exactly what I did when I left the factory, but I did it on a smaller scale with hand tools. So I think there's, there's about 50 or 60 little jobs. They all take about 10 or 20 minutes. Um, if they take longer than that, then I think there's probably something wrong and there's probably an easier way to do it. So that's what I'm all about, is finding the easiest, quickest way to do something for you guys at home without a massive workshop full of incredible machines and CNC machines and that kind of stuff. Got a question? Well, no, it's more of a comment because what TV 10101 is saying is that anyone can do it in inverted commas as long as you're showing them how to and Deej is agreeing. So what's your reaction to that? Cheers, folks. Um, <clears throat> Nobody can teach you anything. People can show you things, but you have to absorb it and teach it to yourself, if you see what I mean. You have to, you can see something being done. This is what I do. I watch somebody, somebody doing something and then I try it myself. And so that, that's what I've done is on, on the courses, the premium courses that you sign up on, it's all long form. So you see me doing it in, um, you know, in life, in proper speed. Um, there's a couple of bits where I've skipped through, but for the most part, I've put left the whole job on in long form. You can skip through if you want. But for me, the interesting thing is watching somebody do it and, and not always making it look smoothly. So, um, you know, I leave everything in. When things go wrong, we leave it in and I fix it. All that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Well, that was just that they were... Is that all right? <laughs> no, they were just saying that, you you know, it, it's, 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 in, it's obviously easier if you're showing them, but what you're hoping is... Yeah, it's obviously easier if somebody's showing you what to do. What like saying. I say, mostly it comes down to what to do, what order to do it in, and when to stop. So um, you can do it in the wrong order. Like um, earlier on, Clinton was saying he's routed his truss rod slot and it's off-centre, so he scrapped his neck. Well, if you'd route with his truss rod slot first, then you'd be fine. Um, you just move your centre line to match. So, um, yeah, the order you do it in is, uh, is that. So this is all, um, can I do it? 
let's move on to oh i'm going to show you some of the people who've done it on the course if you think if you think you're someone who couldn't do this then um here's a couple of guys who have done it uh these people said it was easy all right so bear that in mind these people said it was easy i'm gonna put myself on there and uh there's mike Mike came with his dad because he was only 12 and if you come on on the course if you're under 16 you need to come with a, a guardian uh, Mike came with his dad and they both made guitars he was the youngest so ever. at the time he was our youngest ever yeah and that's our Coventry workshop look yeah. back in Coventry so that was a while back nice what? black American walnut set neck guitar there Mike's in his 30s now Mark. it could be a bolt on actually I can't tell so yeah, so Mike's now a big strapping lad. Uh, he could probably take me now, I reckon. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't want to. Uh, I wouldn't want to fight him now. I could have taken him back then. <laughs> Who else we got? A couple of Hastings lads. No, so they're not, they're not Hastings. But stop, stop okay, using well, names when you... young lads anyway on the course in the school. And what they did was they actually drew, they designed their own guitars and they made them for the school. So how cool, how they, cool is that? They were in groups, weren't they? Yeah, in groups. So they made four guitars for their school. And hopefully to this day, they're still being used. And there's another one. Can't really see the drawing, but uh, they all chose their own wood and their own parts and everything. He's chosen a Paduke neck there. The designs, all the designs themselves, didn't they? Yeah, they they design I'm gonna move your frame. everything themselves. They won't be able to. Oh, you can still hear me. That's cool. Yeah, uh, yeah more kids. And there was a They're young carving their neck, look. And a young woman. There was a young woman. Yeah, so... Um, well, I'm not going to say it. Even girls can do it. There, I said it. Well, I'll see you later. <laughs> I'll see you later. Carol will batter me for that later. No batter. So there's the, uh, there's the guitar, look. That's the drawing. Oh, there's the drawing. Oh, where is it gone? There's the guitar. Drawing. Guitar. They're all unusual. How shapes, cool is that? They? Yeah. So this is the very youngest. Person. No way. This is the very. Youngest. Is that who I think it is? Yeah. That's Joe. Yeah. Wow! Look how young he looks. And he, had, he, had, <laughs> he had his twelfth birthday. <laughs> He yeah, started so, when he was 11. If Joe can do it, I'm sure you can do it. But he also came with his dad. Joe also came with his dad, obviously. Oh, yes. There he is, doing his frets. And he, he wouldn't let us do... He wouldn't let us do anything. He did it all himself. He was exhausted, but he wouldn't... He did every bit himself. Just, Top job. Keep going. And then that's the other school, and there's their finished. So they made three guitars for their school. Um, a, a bass there, and two guitars. They made them, they could make them any shape they want, so they designed and made them themselves. Um, and, and they came and, to school in the school holidays. Yeah, and they got I was conned. <laughs> I was told they were going to be big strapping lads. And I got there, and there was... The first clue was that the chairs were tiny. There we go. Done. Thank you for watching. So now, now um, yeah, anybody can make guitars. With the right support and help. But it might not be easy. <laughs> and there might, there's probably going to be, like, there's no guitar build in history that went perfectly smooth from start to finish. You'll have a hiccup, maybe two, maybe more even. But nothing that we can't see you through. So, um, yeah, I recently re I received an email yesterday, actually, from a guy basically asking, um, is it feasible in this day and age to make a living as a guitar maker? And as I said at the start, I think the answer is yes. Well, I'm here to prove it. Um, I started with literally nothing but the knowledge. When I left the guitar factory, I had nothing and I built up um, 
basically a, a bag full of tools. I had a case full of tools um, and uh, I, I was actually, they were actually stolen from my car. So, whose car? Carol's car. So they were stolen from Carol's car. You should have had better security in your car, Carol. <laughs> um, and so I was back to nothing again. But did I let it stop me? No, because um, there's nothing that could stop me. Uh, a guitar ma another guitar maker friend of mine once said to me that he reckoned that you could build a guitar with a screwdriver. And uh, yeah, you probably could. It would take you a while and it might be a bit rough, but you could, you could whack out holes with a screwdriver, you could, you could make a chisel, you could um, do all kinds of things with a screwdriver. It would be hard, but you could do it. Um, get the best tools you can, though. <laughs> um, so you might be starting from nothing, but as I said earlier, People will, you'll, you'll be amazed how generous people are. Um, but if you're going to make a living at it, you can't rely on your friends and family to keep buying your guitars forever. You do need the, their support big time because um, you're probably not going to be making a whole lot of money <laughs> at the start. Um, if you want to be a guitar maker, um, well, I lived in a tent and ate grass for about four years. <laughs> And I'm only slightly exaggerating. <laughs> I'm only slightly exaggerating there. Um, you'll you'll need to make sacrifices, unless you're one of the lucky few. I mean, I'll tell you this little story, right? Um, whether this is true or not, here's an anecdote. Um, the guy who made Prince's Cloud guitar, you know that um, it's got to be one of the most world famous guitars in history. Prince's Cloud guitar, the one with the great big top curly horn. Um, um, the guy who made that, one of the most iconic guitars in the world, is a car mechanic. Apparently couldn't make a living as a guitar maker, so went back to being a car mechanic. Um, it's a tough business and you're competing against um, guitars that are made in China or wherever for £60. People can go into a shop and buy a brand new guitar for £60 with all the bits on it. It costs me more than that just to buy the bits. So these factories must be buying like thousands and thousands of parts to get the price super cheap so that they can um, punt out these guitars for £60 each or super cheap. The world's polluted with cheap guitars. So um, it all works against us really. I would prefer a world where there's a guitar maker on every street, like there's a musician. It's the same as the music industry. It's all wrapped up and it's owned by the top, a few people at the top. But having said that, there are cracks where people like me can nip in and get a niche. So if you're gonna try and make a living as a guitar maker, then obviously you're gonna to need to learn to make guitars. So we've covered all that in the can I do it section earlier on. But um, you're gonna to need to sell them. I remember when I finished my first guitar after leaving the factory, my first guitar in my own workshop, which was a double-decker bus, by the way. Um, I was so pleased and it was like climbing a mountain. But then you think, you realize, oh wow, that's just one guitar. <laughs> if I'm gonna make a living at this, I've gotta be doing this all the time. I've gotta be making a guitar a week or a guitar a month or lots of guitars. I've gotta do this over and over again and I've gotta sell it. Um, that's the hard bit. So selling your guitars is the hard bit. Um, so most guitar makers have a sideline. The sad truth of it is most guitar makers are also guitar repairers, guitar technicians. So um, if you want to be a guitar maker, then you've got to make some guitars to start with. Um, then what I would do is go around all your local shops, visit your local shops and say, look, 
this is what I do, I'm a guitar maker, here's a guitar that I made, let them try it. They'll be gobsmacked at the amazing quality of your workmanship and they'll start offering you work. Um, now most guitar shops have already got a guitar tech, so that might not happen straight away, but guitar techs come and go, they move on and there will come a point, the guy's too busy, he can't do it, and they'll remember you and you'll get the call. Um, or they'll, the, what, what they'll likely do is they'll pass your number on to, to the guy and then he'll call you. So that's quite often what happens to me. People take guitars into the local shops and um, if the job's too difficult for them or they don't want to do it, they'll send them up here to me. So I get quite a lot of work that way. Um, I also go to lots of open mic nights and I know most of the guitar players in my town, I should think by now. Um, there's probably a few I haven't met, but um, you need to get yourself out there. Go to gigs and open mic nights where there's lots of players. And um, if you've got a guitar that you've made, everyone will come up and go, oh, where'd you get that? Who made that? And you can say, I did. <laughs> so, um, yeah, what you've got to basically do is you've got to build your reputation. And that comes from taking on jobs and doing a good job and then getting recommendations. Um, so I get an awful lot of work from repeat customs. So people come back, but then they also recommend you to a friend. Um, so I've had a, a lot of guys who came just for a setup or a repair, and then they come back and buy a guitar off me, or they come back and enroll on the course or, or whatever. Once they dip their toe in the water, they often come back over and over and over again. And people have had you know, five or six guitars off me. Um, they become collectors. So um, I guess that is a great um, moment just to stop and say thank you to everybody who supported me because the only reason I'm here right now talking to you is because of your support and all the others who've commissioned a guitar from me, um, come on our courses, said nice things about us, recommended us to a friend, um, a repair job, all these things. Um, and what you probably don't realise is how much value there is in just leaving a comment. Um, on this video or any of my videos, just leave a comment, nice video or anything like that. Give us a like and a thumbs up, share it and all that. Um, what you guys probably don't realise is how much of a difference that makes to people like me. So um, please, please do that because um, it, does, it does help us an awful lot. Um, it does have a value because some the next person comes along and reads the comment and, um, you know, it all helps. It all, um, it all helps building with your reputation. So that's, um, unfortunately we're in one of those businesses where it is, um, it is a lot based on reputation and, uh, the only way to do that is to get out there and get, do some work. So, um, I'd recommend that you um, take on some repair work, um, do that kind of stuff. But I would, um, I've got to say, Carol's got a hand up, we'll come to you in a minute, Carol. Um, when you do take on a job, make sure that you know exactly what you're going to do before you do it. That is one of the pitfalls that I've seen other guitar makers um, fall into, uh, they've taken on a job where they really didn't know how to do it. Um, buy a book, learn, uh, there's, there's, there's guitar making techniques that are tried and tested. You don't have to guess how to do jobs because there are, like removing a neck for instance, there are specific techniques for guitar neck removal. Um, you don't just guess how to do it get a book that tells you how to do it or watch a video or do some research. Um, never take on a job if you're not sure how to do it. 
that's my main point okay and i've seen i've seen a lot of guys go by the wayside that way i'm not going to mention any names but um yeah uh it can involve a lot of upset because people are bringing you their treasures people love their guitars and they're bringing to you because they trust that you're going to do a good job and you know, I've seen other guitar makers, I've heard a lot of horror stories as butchers out there. Um, they can destroy your dreams in an instant. And you can destroy your own dreams in an instant if you take on a job and you're not sure how you're going to do it. So um, I turn away jobs if I'm not sure. What jobs do you turn away? Yeah, if I'm not sure what I'm going to do, if I don't know how to do something, or if I think... There's nothing I can do to improve this guitar, then I'll turn it away. Um, and there have been once or twice where I've met the guy a few weeks later and he said, oh, I took it somewhere else and they did what I wanted it to do and I'm happy. So fair play. I, I, maybe I was wrong and I'll, I'll hold up my hands. I was wrong. I could be wrong, but at least I didn't destroy the, the guy's guitar. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so yes, please be careful out there. Um, uh, if you're not sure how to do a job, don't take the job on. You, you turn away. So, yeah, especially with like really old vintage stuff. Somebody and asked, somebody asked, rock and roll asked um, about turning, did you turn things away? So, yeah, I'll, I'll turn a guitar away if, if I don't think there's anything that I can do to improve it. Often people will build an old, people will bring an old guitar which looks battered and the finish is falling off, um, but it's perfectly playable. And they say, can you make it look brand new? Well, no. And I'm not going to even try. Guitars are tools. So I think of myself as a tool maker. The guitar is not the finished product. The finished product is the music. So we're just making tools. So um, nobody, um, you know, nobody worries about a dent in the end of their hammer, do they? So, you know, if you've caught your guitar on the on the edge of the table as you're walking to the stage or something. And it's just a ding, live with it, I would say. Um, we, do do, we do do finish repairs and that kind of thing, but um, anything to do with finish repairs is a, it can be, um, what do they call it? A bottle of worms, um, can of worms. a wasp's nest. Can a can of worms, yeah. <laughs> Worms. <laughs> bottle of worms. That's even worse. Yeah. yeah, you could be opening a bottle of worms. So um, the other thing is, when you take on a job, a repair job, even um, even with your best knowledge and intentions, I can take on a job and I can think I know exactly what I'm going to do. I come to do it, and ah, oh, that's not going to work, and I have to do something else. But if I've learned two or three ways to do the same job then usually I've got, it's in the bank and um, I can just run through my bank of different ways to do things and work out a way to do it. Otherwise, I'll, I'll send it to the guy back and I'll say, look, I'm sorry, but I couldn't do it. We are just mere mortals after all. Um, you're not expected to know everything. Um, here's another thing. A lot of guitar makers specialise in, for instance, only electric guitars. So I know guitar makers who've never crossed the hurdle of make, making an acoustic. Um, they've got like a mental block or they've never just got the desire to do it. Um, and there's lots of different types of guitars. So there's um, your solid body electrics, your, your acoustics, your arch tops. I've done all those kind of guitars, but there's Dobros we haven't done. And there's um, 335s, which we haven't done. But we're working on, com that's coming up, we're going to do a course on that. Um, if you're watching James, <laughs> we're working on it. Um, 335 sort of semi-hollow body style stuff. Um, yeah, but my main point is don't take on what you can't do. Don't bite off more than you can chew. So we've got a, uh, Carol's well, got a couple of things comment. that need, need to be said now. So um, I accidentally deleted DJ's comment, but he said that... Um, Sorry, DJ, Carol's um, deleted you. <laughs> accidentally, accidentally. He said he, he changed a, a friend's Warwick-based truss rod. It was £4,000 worth of guitar. And he, 
as he was hacking the fretboard off with a scraper, yeah. like he he nearly pooed himself. Yeah. And you probably wished that you hadn't taken the job on it again, at that so point. You, that's, it's absolutely you live and learn, eh? Roland Ashjan says, don't get any ideas about denting my guitar to make a point so you can fix it. I saw you glance and think demo, right? Um, um, and, uh, I wouldn't dare. We've had some actual questions about um, what you do. So when you've, come, when you've finished... Touching wood. Go on, questions. No, well, you've, they're about um, marketing, selling and setting prices. So do you want to finish your list and then come back to them? Well, that's pretty much what we're moving on to now. OK, well... So um, earlier on, somebody, and I've lost, I've, I didn't write it down, somebody asked, how do you go about marketing, um, I think it was uh, rock and roll, and marketing guitars that you've made yourself, DIY guitars, how would you go about it? And then on from that, and setting prices, and Bill Flood asked about pricing repairs, so there's a whole thing in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, one thing I didn't mention yeah. about... Um, yeah, you need the support of a wonderful person. Now, I've got a carol. <laughs> Not everybody's got a carol. But I can tell you, back in the day, back in the factory that shall not be named... Um, there was a team of carols. <laughs> well, Patrick was the main guitar maker. But, um, but he partnered with a businessman. So you need a bit of both, really. You need, obviously, you need the guitar making skills you need a bit of business acumen as well. Now, if you're like me and you've got zero business acumen, <laughs> then you need help and partner with somebody. That's what a lot of people do. So you have a business partner. So you're the guitar maker and you have somebody who does the marketing and the selling. That's one way to do it. And that is what a lot of the most successful people do. Um, we, we kind of muscle on, don't we, Carol? So let's talk a little bit about, um, yeah, if you want to be a successful guitar maker, you need, um, well, a sideline helps. And I was going to mention, um, there's a lot of guitar makers that have got a real job. <laughs> so they've got a real job in the day and then they're guitar makers in their spare time. Believe it or not, there's, a, there's quite a few guys out there that are like that. So, so let's call them semi-pros. There's a lot of semi-pros out there, so, you know, you don't have to give up your day job. Um, if you do want to give up your day job, like me, um, yeah, I'll say the other thing as well, that um, you need a real job or you need a wife with a real job. <laughs> sacked. Carol sacked me again. So that's a joke that Marcel told me from Holland. It was in a, it was in a Dutch guitar magazine. Every guitar maker needs a wife with a real job. <laughs> so that, hap that helps as well. Unfortunately, um, Carol now works with me, so she hasn't got a real job either. <laughs> We're on our own. Oh, so I'm gonna, tell you, I'm gonna tell you another piece of advice that um, a very wise man told me, I've said this before on a live stream, so if you've heard it before, I apologize. But for those of you who haven't, a very, famous and successful um, guitar player once said to me, one of the best in the world, he said to me, Mark, what's the difference between those bands that practice every week in the village hall and they do their gigs every week, but they never get anywhere? What's the difference between them and the bands that are really successful and they make a living and they end up um, making their living as musicians? So I thought about it for a while and I had to admit I didn't know the answer. And he said, the ones that made it, they had to make it. They didn't have any choice. And so, you know, if you really want to be a guitar maker, you've got to make guitars and you've got to sell guitars. And if you really want to do it, You've got to just throw yourself in. Live in a tent and eat grass for four years. TB101 <laughs> um, says he keeps trying to give up his day job. <laughs> well, that's it. If you keep doing, trying to give it up, you will never will. <laughs> You've got to just do it. Please don't, don't give up your day jobs, guys. 
but, but or I'm just passing on um, what was said to me. Um, the ones that make it are the ones that had to. And um, if you think about it, it's true. You think about what you're capable of. You probably don't even know what you're capable of when you really have to. Um, you can do anything. So, um, as long as you like grass, as long as you like eating grass. I lived off lemon juice for four years. What can I say? That is the truth. Gave me an ulcer. So yes, um, um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about marketing then. So. Um, on, a, on a local scale, what I recommend you do, as I said earlier, is get yourself out there um, to gigs, open mic nights, make some guitars and take them with you, show people. Your guitars are your best adverts, right? Well, there's no gigs at the moment, no. So. Good point. No gigs at the moment. Oh, no. Not a good time to start time. out being a guitar maker. <laughs> so what you've got to do is get your guitars into people's hands. So if you can't get to the gigs, people are still live streaming and doing all that playing and recording. So what you've got to do is get your guitars into players' hands. And um, that's one of the things they used to do at the factory was um, they had a guy whose job it was literally just to phone up the managers of artists and ask them if they would try one of our guitars. And so we used to send out guitars just on trial at the factory. They could afford to do that. Um, we can't afford to do that, unfortunately, but um, you might be able to, who knows. Um, somehow, you've got to get your guitars into the hands of players and then get their opinions that you can then share with others and hopefully they will also share it with others as well. So other ways to advertise, obviously um, there's guitar making, sorry, there's guitar magazines. We used to advertise in all the magazines they're now um, online as well, so they've all got websites. We used to do all the guitar shows, so these things are going to come back at some point. There are these things called guitar shows where you can hire a table and show your wares. So they're often at town halls or um, football um, stadiums or um, horse racing venues, large venues where they set up a big room and um, guitar makers from all over the country or even all over the world come to show their guitars and then um, anybody interested in guitars comes and looks around and uh, hopefully you'll be able to stand out. It's really difficult to stand out at those kind of things because it's usually a forest of guitar necks and people get blinkered and they can't see past the name on the headstock. And if they don't recognise the name on the headstock, they just keep walking. They assume that you're having your guitars made in China or something like that. So what I found I had to do was literally stop people and say, look, I made these guitars. These are all made in the UK by myself. And I can also teach you how to do it. And as soon as you start talking to them, then they can't get enough. And um, but they don't realise, because they see so many guitars, um, you have to do something to stand out. So like I say, I run courses and that's what I mainly do as my sideline. But I also do repairs and uh, that kind of stuff as well. So, Carol, you're going to have to tell me what to say because I've no idea what that means. Well, I was saying that Brian contacted us yesterday and bought, bought some <coughs> things because... But he does it... He, he's retired. He's just doing it because he loves to, He loves making stuff. He doesn't even play guitar. Yeah, so of course, you don't have to want to make a living to make a guitar. Um, you don't even have to play guitar. We've had a lot of people, um, like Brian was Carol saying, he's, um, he's ordered some stuff yesterday. Hello, Brian. All right, Brian, good luck with it. Um, he's making something, he wants to leave something for his, his kids and his grandkids. Um, leave something behind, isn't it? Something beautiful. So uh, yeah, what a fantastic idea. That's what it's all about. As I said earlier, that is, that is one of the main reasons I wanted to do it. I wanted to, originally I was a player and I wanted to make beautiful music so that when I was gone, I would leave something behind and people would say, that's beautiful. 
it was worthwhile him being here. Well, turned out I wasn't very good at playing the guitar. <laughs> I'm better at making them. So uh, yeah, we do play as well. Carol's a beautiful singer and we do, we do make music together. We still enjoy it. Um, we're available for bar mitzvahs and funerals, obviously. It's not allowed. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, right. at so some point the lockdown will end, live music will come back and you can go in and visit your open mic nights and get your, uh, get your guitars out there and seen. You've got your magazines you can advertise in, guitar shows which don't exist anymore but they're coming back at some point. Um, your best advert though, as I was saying earlier, your best advert is to actually build some guitars. Um, and some advice that if you're not interested in building guitars but you just you want to have a guitar made, then um, think of it from their point of view. Um, you wouldn't buy a guitar from someone who you haven't seen a guitar yet. So um, you've got to have some finished guitars to show people that you can actually do it. They don't need to be spectacularly fancy looking. They can be just basic guitars. This is what I recommend you start with, something like this. Um, a basic guitar because people can still appreciate how well they play when they're in tune. And so even if it's a basic guitar, people can still appreciate how well they play and they'll commission you to make one. So we've, we've, we've had a super question. We've had a super chat. From Mitch's World Travel. Woohoo! He sent us 30 dollars. Super chat. Thank you so super much. Chat. Yeah. He says, he says, I love your Who videos. Was that? It's, it's called Mitch's World Travel. He sent us 30 dollars. Rock and roll. He said, I love your videos. Cheers, Mitch's World Travel. I've watched most of them. I'm just a beginner guitarist. And by watching your videos, it made me want to make my own. Do you think Do it. Do you think it's good to practice on the DIY kits you get on eBay or Amazon? That is an absolutely brilliant question. Thank you for that. And thank you for our first super chat. That's made my day, that has. <laughs> so EP saying, how come that Brilliant Mitch, question. EP says, how come Mitch has got such big text? It's a terrible capitalist world we live in. That's because it? he's done a super chat. <laughs> he's special. Oh, no, no you're all... You're all oh, okay. Yeah, if you want to do a super chat, you have to go at the bottom of the chat. There's a little thing with a dollar sign next to it, I think. I don't know how to do it. You'll work it out. Uh, Mitch did. Thank you very much for that. And to answer your question, it's actually not a bad idea to, to, to dip your toe in the water. Um, you know, I used to be a bit snobby about kits because we build completely from scratch. Um, you know, we start from... <laughs> We start from raw lumps of wood right through to the finished thing here. But I've kind of, um, I've come to the opinion over time, there's no shame in starting with a kit because A, it's cheaper, easier, and you'll find out whether you like it or not. Three good reasons for, for starting with a kit. Um, now we do sell a kit on the website, but it's more of a, um, you know, they're just blanks. There's nothing pre-made for you. Nothing at all is pre-made for you. Um, what I've done is I've selected what I think is the best possible materials, um, bearing in mind quality and ease of use, um, you know, workability and that. So mahogany for the neck and body and rosewood for the, for the fretboard. Um, I've forgotten the question. What am I talking about? Who's asking about kits? Right, so, so yeah, our like, kits are like basic blocks of wood. Um, and I was a bit snobby about kits, but I don't think there's any shame in it. Um, is it is, should you get them to practice? What, what do you feel get about one. Practice? Get one as a, as a taster. Um, like I say, you'll find out whether you like it, which is the main thing. And you'll have a little bit of practice experience and, and it's easier and quicker. And you'll end up with something that you can actually, you know, you know is going to work. Um, uh, so yes, there's no shame in doing a kit, but actually I lied earlier when I said there's nothing pre-made because in our kit, the fretboard is pre-made. So I do recommend that you, you start with a pre-made fretboard. You don't have to. In fact, I've done a video on how we make this 
and also I've done a how how to do it the hard way which is by hand if you look in the channel there's two videos for that um, but I do recommend there's no shame in starting with a pre-made fretboard either so that's what we supply with our kit pre-made fretboard then at least you know it's going to be in tune it's going to play in tune and all that well interesting rock and roller uh, 912 says that he's actually found uh, some kits harder than building from scratch. He built. He built. Handmade. Really? Um, well, I've not had this experience because, as I say, I I only build from scratch. Um, I, I can see your kind of point. If the kit isn't a very good one, if it isn't made very well, then you might have more problems um, just trying to get it to all fit together. Uh, um, yeah. One thing that I've been my uh, my website guys have advised me to. Um, to actually make a video where I, I build a kit myself because um, apparently I'll get a lot of views doing that. Um, if you guys are interested in that then let me know. If you want to see me put a kit together let me know and, uh, and I'll do it for you if that's what you want. Um, but yeah, no shame in it. I guess it depends on the quality of your kit. Thanks for that super chat Mitch, that was, that was awesome, our first one. <laughs> Right, um, I'm no um, longer a super chat virgin. No, but Deej says he's saving himself for your knife, which will come up later. <laughs> right, um, super clunk, uh, Clint in Hawaii says, recently two well-known musicians inquired about one particular build he had made because he thought he was a custom luthier and he and would he like to commission a build? Uh, would, you know, could they commission a build? But he said that he told them he was just a novice and I was saying well done because yes. in the long run you get more respect. Yes, you? unfortunately... There are people out there that haven't got, um, you know, as much sense or responsibility as you and they'll take these jobs on even though they know they can't do them and then they end up making a mess of it and um, they end up making people angry and uh, getting run out of town. <laughs> so don't be like that. Do what Clinton does and what I do is don't take on a job that you can't do. Um, did I answer that question? Yeah, um, can I just, I need to, I need to... We'll do some final questions then and then we're going to wrap up, folks. Because okay, well, it's been over an hour. Okay, these are all important, right? So, so EP, Important questions. EP said he'd like to watch you, you build one of your kits, but that's what you did at the, the beginning of the lockdown, Yes, wasn't it? if you want to see me actually put one of my kits together, then uh, I've already done that um, on the lockdown special. If you look in the... Um, the on the YouTube channel, you'll find an entire free playlist playlist where I build a guitar completely from scratch. I think it's called Build Build Your Own Guitar. Okay, well, you... Live or something like that. I can't remember. Just, you'll find it. There's only four or five playlists. So you can watch that. So um, you can Mitch, watch that. Mitch's work, World Traveller sent you another super chat to thank you. For oh, no, stop. I appreciate your advice. That's um, enough now. Stop. Says, I'm going to try one and see what it's like. If you don't mind, can you maybe make a list of the description of all the tools that you can get that are cheap but good to use? So you need to point into the... Can I do a list of all the tools? Uh, a description of all the tools you can get that are cheap and good to use. Right, we're, we're ahead of you. Mitch, thank you again for that. That was way above and beyond the call of duty. Um, that's that you can stop now. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, you probably missed right at the start. I was telling you about you're going to need some tools if you want to be a guitar maker. I've put together a, a little ebook, um, and at the end is a checklist with the list of essential tools that you can't actually see. List of essential tools with a checklist. Um, there's quite a few that you'll need, but this this is my definitive list. Okay, and uh, it's a booklet, isn't it? yeah, you can download that for free if you go to, if you go and become a supporter on the website. The links are all in the description down there, and um, you can download that. Uh, and that there's it's there's a book, book and it, it shows you the pictures of all the stuff, but also the checklist at the end. And there's also a video called Essential Tools for Guitar Makers or Essential Tools for Making Guitars. It's on this channel, you'll find it, where I, I actually talk through the book and I show you what to look out for when you're buying a bandsaw, uh, buying a router and that kind of thing. Um, of course, that's just my opinion. 
Um, I'm sure every guitar maker out there has got their own way of doing things. As I said earlier, people can only show you things and then you teach it to yourself. That's my philosophy. And so, um, yeah, another thing I didn't say earlier was that um, we've had all kinds of people with disabilities building. So um, I've had a guy with um, one hand. I had a guy in a wheelchair, um, all sorts of stuff. So um, I can show you things, but then you have to teach it to yourself and you may have to adapt those methods to your own abilities. And that's what guitar making is all about. Um, you've got a job to do. You've got a problem. You've got to solve it. You've got to work out how to do it. So um, I'll usually show you at least one way, um, sometimes two or three different ways to do the same job. And then it's up to you to adapt that to your own abilities and teach it to yourself. Nobody can, t nobody can teach you anything. You have to learn it yourself. People can only show you things. So um, hopefully that made some kind of sense. Right. Um, Another question. No, I know you're, you're thinking you should finish, but there's actually, I just want to flag up, there's quite a few other subjects which are perhaps too big, perhaps we should come back to. So, for example, you know, um, you mentioned, we touched on marketing um, our own guitars, which you've, you've covered to some degree. Yeah. Setting prices for guitars and repairs, that's another subject, isn't it? And then... and then That's why you need a Carol or yeah, a business manager. And um, Clint, Super, Super Clint, was just asked, how do you shop for lumber? Um, seems um, the inspiration for builds also depends on wood, and I said, you just send me a list. It can but, do. Um, <laughs> we, Sometimes I've got a bit of wood and I'm like, oh, I've got, to make a, I've got to make a Telecaster out of that or whatever. This piece of wood has to be that. Sometimes that happens. Um, more often than not, somebody wants a certain guitar and then we buy the wood for it. Uh, well, and so Ro Roland Ashdown said, what, what about um, a, a show sourcing, selecting timber how, and how to store and treat? And James Bissett has is, is sort of thumbs that up. So yeah, brilliant. We'll do one on wood for sure. I want to show you how to stack wood at least. If, um, if you buy a kit from us, especially the acoustic kits, um, you know, the... <clears throat> the, the, the pieces of wood are very thin and wide that makes them prone for warping so the way you stack them is very important to keep put a long story short make sure the air can flow all the way around them stack them with sticks with some weight on to hold them flat and they should stay flat if air can move all the way around you'll have problems when you put a thin piece of wood down on a flat bench so air can only get to one side of it, that's when you'll get problems. Um, but yes, um, wood, wood storage, make sure air can get all the way around it, make sure it's in a nice dry place, basically. If it's in the place where you're going to build the guitar, even better, that's ideal. Um, sourcing wood, there's only really a handful of places I'm going to, I can recommend. Um, pardon? Let's do, let's do a show on it. Let's, we will do a do, full show on wood, right? So that's fantastic. I'm just trying to give them some quick stuff to work on. Um, look up guitar maker suppliers. There's, um, there's Luthier Supplies. Them, In the UK, there's Luthier Supplies, um, Touchstone Tone Woods, and that's probably about it. Us. There's all sorts of them. Um, yeah, there's quite a few of the smaller ones popping up here and there. But I'm, I can't recommend, um, um, Tone Tech is another one that I will recommend. But, um, but I won't recommend all these smaller ones because I haven't tried them. So we can't, we can't do that. Um, but yeah, there's always us. If you get stuck, you can just call us and we'll, we'll get you straight. Right, this is a good, good place to... to so final question to, then. To an end. Well, so there's, there's two things that were said really early on, right? Okay. So um, TV 101 asked... Um, what does a man who has made a made a living out of guitar making do for a hobby? What do you do for a hobby? And Roland Ashdown, <sighs> not what what yeah, you know, Roland Ashdown has recently bought a Barry Vise kit to build an album. Oh wow! So there's two things. They were really early on. They were said. So, so Roland bought a kit. A Barry Vise. Yeah, um, Barry yeah. came to the workshop here. Actually, we used to run the Build Your Own Amp course here in this very workshop with Barry Vise. Um, so yeah, he sells kits, build your own amp. Um, good luck with that. 
it's I think it's harder than guitar making. Um, Barry actually told me that when they build the kits, seven out of ten don't work. No, sorry, seven out of ten work. Seven out of ten work. <laughs> yeah, um, because soldering is you know it's tricky. There's going to be one coming up on soldering as well, by the way. Um, soldering is a guitar making technique that's coming up in a few weeks. Um, but he puts them right. So yeah, you can send your thing to him and he'll put it right for you. But my point is that um, with all those wires and intricacies, it's a lot more complicated than guitar making. And it, I think it's more difficult. I think guitar making is easier. And certainly the wiring on guitar making is dead easy. And we get, you know, um, I would say we get an occasional wiring issue, but nine out of ten guitars work straight off the bat. Um, depends on how complicated your circuit is, obviously. Um, we do have the occasional issue, but um, if you have any issues like that, then um, get on the website, ask us, and one of us will be able to sort it out for you. And and just on that, Barry Vise used to run in down south, somewhere near um, London, he used to run um, face-to-face courses like we did, because he, he ran them here and then he found... Yeah, so he used to run them here. Um, it was me who actually convinced him to run face-to-face -face courses because he just sold kits before that. Um, but he said he didn't have anywhere to do it, so I offered him to use my workshop. And he came um, several years running to do that. But unfortunately, it became really frustrating for me not to be able to use my own workshop while he was running the course. So uh, in the end, he found they, they found... Um, they, he moved on and they found... Um, it was like a museum where they made, it was like a valve museum and they had a workshop there that he ended up using. So yeah, Barry Vice, the king of valves in the UK. Love him, love him, love him. Hi Barry, if you're watching. <laughs> so, so what does a man who makes guitars for a living do for a hobby, Mark? What does a man who makes guitars for a living do for a hobby? What do you think? <laughs> well, obviously I play guitar, don't I? And, um, and I make guitars. <laughs> That's also my hobby. <laughs> um, when I have a day off, what do you think I do? I come in here, don't I, in my workshop, and I tinker. But... Chase moles. Yeah, I chase moles as well. But I do have another little secret hobby, which I haven't admitted to you yet. <laughs> um, this is a very new thing to me. Um, I only discovered this... Um, literally only a few months ago. Last year, was it last year? So anyway, I've got a new hobby, which is flying drones. <laughs> this is my little indoor one. So uh, believe it or not, this is my tiny hook. And we fly this around the workshop when we're finished working, obviously. <laughs> We fly this round the workshop, me and Lewis, we race our tiny hooks around the workshop when we're not working, sometimes. So that's my, that's my other little hobby, but that's brand new. Up until recently, my only other hobby was, was playing, making guitars and playing guitars. But yeah, um, it did get to the point where I, f I was boring myself. So uh, I discovered these things. Um, and the thing that you probably haven't twigged is there's a camera on it. So you put these goggles on and it's, it's called FPV, first person view. So it's like you're in it. You feel like you've shrunk down to the size of a bird and you can fly around and I'm flying around. I've got a bigger one for flying outside and we fly around in the trees. Ah, I've always dreamt of flying, haven't you? So yeah, guitar makers dream of flying. And now with, the, with modern technology, I can actually feel like I'm doing it. Um, can I just tell you the last comment? Um, Clint in Hawaii says, why don't you set, set up a camera for Carol to fly it around whilst you're waiting? But that would be a disaster, wouldn't it? Yeah, unfortunately really you difficult. can't live stream from the drones, but yeah. I'm sure I will at some point. I'll start introducing some cheeky drone footage. It's so difficult <laughs> to do, actually. I'd love to show you a bit of the area because um, we live in such a beautiful area here in Ayrshire. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a Coventry boy. I'm a city boy born and bred. And now I live in the glorious hills of South Ayrshire. So I feel like I'm on holiday every day. <laughs> and, and especially on a day like today, it's glorious sunshine out there. 
Um, it was actually a bit too hot earlier. It's nice and cool in here in my, um, this is an old um, cow shed. So it's uh, the stone walls are about two foot thick or thicker, massive thick walls. And so it's lovely and cool in here. It's an ideal environment for making guitars because it's a very constant, stable atmosphere. So yeah, guitar maker's hobby is making guitars, playing guitars, or flying drones. <laughs> Guess what I'm doing this afternoon? <laughs> so anyway, um, with all that said, I think we've covered everything. Don't give up your day jobs unless you've got a lot of support from either your friends and family, um, but they can't buy guitars off you forever. Um, you need the support of your customers as well, which means that you're going to have to not let them down. So uh, I'll just finish with a little apology for Ed. Um, one of my main foibles is I do sometimes promise things that I can't and, and then let them down. So, um, you have no concept of time. We, we missed a deadline and I'm working on it. So, um, so Ed, your guitar is, is well in progress and it will be with you shortly. Um, and for everybody else, I just want to say thank you if you watched right till the end. Um, let's all go away and become guitar makers. Uh, if you get stuck, you know where we are. Let us know. And I'm just going to say thank you, Mitch, for your super chat. That just about made my day, that did. Um, I'm going to go and have a celebratory cup of tea and a little fly. And then I'm coming back to work on Ed's guitar. So also don't forget the new Guitar Maker's Rasp in the shop. And the Guitar Maker's knives are almost finished. Look at that. It's so close to being finished, just not quite. So um, we're making up a batch of these and these will be ready to go um, in the next few days probably. And, and I am going to make a, a video on how we make these. So if you don't want to buy one, you can actually make your own. Um, and that goes for the curved chisel as well. So head over to the website and check all that stuff out. Thank you very much for watching. And most importantly, remember is to check twice and cut once. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching.